Recently, I made a silly purchase of an acceptable grade hi-fi system from Toshiba and wanted to get the service manuals to go with it. They turned out not to be scanned already, so when I got them, I decided I would do that myself so they could be shared. Remember back to my video on the HP 4C where I said I didn't want to use it as my everyday archiving scanner? Well, I have been. It's just so good for the right uses, but it has one major flaw. It's slow. Now, we're talking four minutes a page at 600 DPI slow. Now, for a fine detailed service manual with schematics, I wouldn't recommend something like the Caesars that I've reviewed before. The HP's far too slow to be practical, and this wasn't the only thing I'd encountered like this. So, I decided it was finally time, and I broke down and bought a new scanner. One that split the difference between a flatbed and documents. So, after not all that much research, actually, I bought one. And this is it. The Avision FB6080E Zero Edge Scanner. Fresh from the year 2006. It's closer in time to the HP 4C than now by double. But it's effectively still being made today. And you might be surprised that you, yes, you the viewer, have probably helped pay for one if not multiple of these at an exorbitantly inflated retail price of nearly $3,000 like I found I had. There's a lot to unpack here. Let's start with just what I have here so you can understand what the hardware is and why it's special. And I'll let you know right up front, I'm not insane enough to have spent $3,000 on this thing. I called this a zero edge scanner, and that name is this thing's most significant feature. The front edge of the glass has zero edge. Most of the scanners will have a frame around the glass bed. Why? I, I don't really know. After using this one, I can tell you firsthand, this is just how every scanner should be. It's better and there aren't any downsides. I've opened this thing, which we'll get to later, and it's not built differently than any other scanner I've seen inside of. I would guess manufacturers are creating artificial demand by creating these arbitrary differences, but I'm pretty sure there's only one other A3 scanner on the market like this made by PlusTech that is just as old as the A-Vision and I bet has sold 1% as many units. Demand must just be low, and I guess manufacturers don't care to consolidate products. What makes the Zero Edge such a desirable feature though is the ability to put a book right up against the glass all the way to the spine to scan as much of the page as possible. This makes this the absolute best non-destructive option for scanning bound documents. The alternative to this is cutting the spine and running those loose pages through a feed scanner, which I do not like. And that's basically this thing's main party trick. Aside from that, it's just a normal scanner. Although, it is made using some older and better design concepts. This is a CCD scanner, like the HP 4C, which means it uses a reflective optical block, giving it excellent long-distance focusing capabilities for a scanner. The light is CCFL, and while well, I'm not thrilled about that since the bulb will fail eventually, I'll let you know that I'm not the first person to think about replacing it with LEDs. It is only 600 DPI, also like the 4C, but on the other hand, it doesn't lie about it and only reports being 600 DPI when you connect it to a computer instead of making up all sorts of useless interpolated resolutions. I do like the black backing for the scan bed instead of white like other scanners I've used have. I was recently made aware of how that blends in with the ink on the back side of pages to eliminate some of it showing through when scanning. I also really like the springs on the hinges that hold the lid up. It's such a simple but extremely nice feature. On the right side of the scanner, there is this black wedge that does nothing, at least on mine. We'll get back to this, but most of these scanners will be like this instead of having buttons, which you might see in some of the pictures of it sometimes. Lastly, around the back are the connectors. This uses the superior type B connector and takes 24 volt DC power with a four millimeter barrel jack, the same size as a PSP. There's also a connector for the ADF option on top, but personally, I wouldn't want it after using it without and with it. Speaking of using it, let's cover how I'm doing that. I use Linux, and I have zero clue if this is usable on modern Windows still, and have no desire to find out. When I was searching for a document scanner, Linux compatibility was a concern, and it turns out the PlusTech isn't. I know someone with the PlusTech model who was able to confirm for me that it definitely does not work on Linux. So that makes the Avision 
the only Linux compatible zero edge scanner maker. The software options on Linux for scanning with this also aren't amazing. Scanlight is the default scanning program for KDE and it hangs after a scan pass with this thing. This made me drop back to Xzane, which is like the Windows 3.1.1 version of a Linux program. It works perfectly, it just uses anachronistic conventions in some places that makes it a chore. It does work though, which lets us move on. The only other thing I'll mention is that I brought back my USB foot pedal. I made a video on using this with Linux a few years ago, and I set it up here to send the Xane shortcut for scanning. So my hands never have to touch the computer once the process is going. And with that, the setup is complete now. So here's what using it is like. Now there isn't anything unique to using the book edge on this from a compatibility standpoint. You just put the book up against the front of the unit hold it in place with either your hands or the lid and start the scan. The only minor thing you need to note is that you will flip the book around to scan the opposing page, which will mean it is scanned upside down. When scanning, I'm just letting that happen. And after I'm done, I'll grab the half of the files that need rotated, move them into a different folder and run an image magic command on them to fix all of them at once. Now, to give you a good example of this scanner, I went through this entire 372 page Intel system catalog from 1978. This has all sorts of small details, split pages and grayscale images. I scanned this at 600 DPI and generated a PDF of it that you can see on archive.org. I feel the results here are as near to perfect as you can get without cutting the book and I'm extremely happy with the end product. The cross page images in this book don't look quite right when you look at them in person, but I think the results from this scan really show how well this scanner can capture them. I will mention I'm cheating a little bit to get these results by pushing the spine slightly up and over the glass. The unscanned page is still flat, but the spine area is curved a little bit more as a result. There is a two millimeter gap from the edge of the glass to where the scan sensor cannot reach. And in an attempt to remove some dirt from the sensor causing lines on my scanner, I somehow cause the right edge to be shadowed, so I have to crop that and lose a little bit more usable space on that side. But even with my compromised unit, I can still get extremely good results, I feel. Another example here is a two-page ad with details that reach across. I scanned this both by using the edge and just mashing the whole magazine flat with the machine. The results of the separate scans are much better, not only from how far into the spine it goes, but also because the curve of the page is perpendicular to the sensor light, which avoids the reflection you can see in the mashed example. This physical layout really does feel like the best way to non-destructively scan bound materials like this. It does have a couple of other tricks though. If you can accept a small loss along one edge, you can put a 12 inch jacket from a record or laser disc in here and scan it all at once. Since there is no bezel on the front, you don't get any weird angling issues like you would on other scanners. And you can always just flip the jacket around to get the missing edge if you want, depending on how precise you're trying to be. It's a pretty acceptable loss in my opinion though, to be faster. Though speed isn't something I would tend to associate with using this. This is a Caesar scanner. This version is an ET24 Pro and was provided to me by Caesar for a sponsored review. This video is not sponsored though, and I can say whatever I want here. This scanner is very fast. I didn't appreciate just how fast it was until I used the A-Vision. In my review of this scanner, I went through a 400 page car manual in about 40 minutes. The 372 page Intel catalog took me about two and a half hours on the A-Vision. I think the absolute maximum speed I can achieve with this setup is about 200 pages an hour, but that isn't really practical. And I think around 160 is a lot more likely. It was also very difficult to push through scanning something for that long. And this is why people debind books and run them through an ADF. I want to be clear though, that I don't think the A-Vision is slow. You can just only move the sensor so fast with a scanner like this and have it be stable. It's just a limit to this kind of scanner. But the Caesar is just not an option for some things like this Intel book. There's text that is too small for it and technical diagrams I would rather make sure are perfectly captured. The camera in the Caesar isn't great and has uncontrollable exposure settings and sharpening that make it not well suited to anything that isn't mostly text or simple drawings. 
The digital distortion correction it uses will also always be imperfect as well. That's not unique to it though. They're institutional grade machines that work on the same principle. So there are times when you just need a flatbed scanner. Both have their uses. However, this is where I have to confess something. As much as I like the A-Vision, I have a hard time recommending it. I got mine for cheap. Well, cheap for these. It was untested with some scratches on the glass and it was $140 shipped. Normally these sell used for closer to four or $500 at the low end, which I have a feeling is close to the actual MSRP. The problem is that the example I have here and most of the ones you will see for sale were not sold at MSRP. And these used ones may be very used. You may have noticed that my scanner doesn't say A-Vision on the front of it. That's because mine is an OEM model meant to be sold as a package deal. I've actually been able to identify five different companies all rebadging this scanner. Ivina, ScanX, SimpleScan, Kick, and Envisionware have all sold this exact scanner under their own company names. These package deals are meant to be sold to schools and city libraries and as such come with an extreme upcharge for the favor of making them worse and sometimes intentionally trying to make them incompatible with standard drivers by changing the USB device IDs. Just the scanner with software from ScanX is $3,000, but these companies really want to sell a complete package with a garbage computer running their software. Envisionware is selling systems with an Intel Pentium G4400 from 2015. To put that in perspective, that would be like buying a Celeron computer from 1998 when this thing first came out. So what do these customers get when they buy these overpriced setups? Well, we know what just the scanner is like, but I wanted to experience the whole thing. And luckily my local library turned out to have one. Actually, they might have four of these because their site says they have one at every location. That's probably like, $20,000 of investment right there. And while I like the idea of these being at the libraries, I don't really like the providers. I brought a book of my own to the library to scan with what they had, which was a ScanX model with the ADF, but using an Envisionware PC. I'm guessing their original scanner failed at some point because this was also likely an FB6280 ADE, which is a slightly revised model with an LED light source instead. Avision still makes this scanner now with LEDs as the FB6380 ADE, which I'm not sure what else has been changed, but it seems to be mostly identical from the images and specs. Now I want to make comparisons between my CCFL model and this LED model, but I have to stress how terrible this software is and it making that not really fair. It's designed for the minimum training needed, which is why these models have no buttons. It also has very little configurability and some very bad automatic functions. Like my book with the black cover was impossible to scan the entire surface of it because it would always automatically crop it. It also introduced these extremely strange artifacts that I'm not really sure what it was trying to fix with. The biggest difference I think I can attribute to the difference between the LED and CCFL models is that I don't think the LEDs light the spine as well. The CCFL curves down the front, which means there's more light in the spot where the page will curl away and darken. I didn't get a good look at the LEDs because I didn't want to try and force the library scanner to leave the sensor in the middle of the bed, but I think they don't do that, which makes the spine area darker. It could have also been processing by the software being more aggressive with the gain though. I can't really say. I can say though that I did not like the ADF. I didn't actually use it, but it's much heavier, awkward, and not as well padded. This would be terrible for scanning a whole book like I've done and I would end up taking it off. Overall, my experience with the libraries unit wasn't great, but it's mostly down to the software just being a disaster. A point I want to make though, is that I went to my library and used their scanner possibly like thousands of other people and also possibly just like has been done with my unit and any other rebadged ones on eBay. These will not have come from a background that will have cared for them and made sure that they were used properly. I can at least feel somewhat better about mine's bulb because I do know that it will automatically shut off after a while. but. I have no idea how many hours it has on it and it could be a lot. This makes those 
multi-hundred dollar used asking prices a lot harder to swallow as well, I feel. And on that, I mentioned I think that's going to be close to the MSRP for the scanner itself. I don't know what the retail cost of the actual A-Vision branded models are because they don't seem to be for sale to the average customer. The best I can do was noticing that Scanex sells not only the A-Vision, but also the Caesar, and for nearly five times the retail price without a computer, just their software, which I assume about as horrible as Envision wears and might even be the same software based on some of the screenshots. So if they put a similar markup on the A-Vision, those used prices start to seem a whole lot worse to me. So this leaves me with a very conflicted view of this genuinely great device. It's very good for what it does, and for me on Linux is literally the only option, at least in A3 size. There are a couple more A4 scanners from PlusTech and A-Vision that are also very expensive and seem much less common, but I can't recommend one of these possibly extremely used scanners at the prices they can go for on eBay, especially with limited shelf life parts like the bulb in mine. An LED one might fare better, but you're still taking a gamble on things like glass scratches and other wear issues. So I'll leave you with this. Price aside, it's very good as far as the hardware is concerned, but may feel slow just due to the physical limitations of single page scanning with a moving sensor. On a final thought though, I might actually have an affordable option for you that I will be exploring more in the future. Canon made a ton of cheap lied brand scanners with a simplified moving sensor mechanism in the center. I don't see any reason you couldn't pick one of these up for like $30 used, probably in better shape than the A-Vision, and just cut one side of the plastic off to get a flat edge. Or even better, cut the side off of two of them and get a little creative. I've got some donors on order to explore this more in the future. So if you want to see the results of that, you may want to subscribe to the channel to be notified when I release new videos. If you want to help support the channel, you can find me on Patreon. But for now, that's it. And I will see you next time.